Uh, welcome to week three, our final week of our series that we've been in uh, the previous two Sundays called Our Church. We've been talking about what it means to be the church here at Pioneer Drive, here in Abilene. I know uh, some of you are new today, some uh, folks from out of town visiting, uh, family, and, and what I hope you hear today is who we aim to be, who we want to be, who we, who we really try to be. And I'm, I'm deeply, deeply thankful for the work of Daniel McKay. Daniel serves as our associate pastor for Teaching and Connection. Most Sundays you can find him preaching over in our gathering service uh, on the other end of our campus. But Daniel, as Connections Minister, has really been uh, the one behind a lot of the sermons and the writing that we've been, the ideas you've seen over the past three weeks and the volunteer fair that's going on and concludes today. Because serving is something that really, really matters in God's kingdom. Jeff read from Mark chapter 10 earlier in our service. Jesus modeled his kingdom uh, for us in service. And so I would just say that as I would expect from you at Pioneer Drive, the response that we've had uh, to the first two weeks has been absolutely overwhelming. You're signing up, you're responding, uh, things are, are, are getting accomplished because of your willingness to serve. Many of you are continuing to do what you've been doing for so long, and we say thank you. And so whatever your story is, whatever your role is in the life of the church, I'm thankful that you've chosen to partner in gospel ministry here at Pioneer Drive. And so the first two words this morning are a simple thank you. Thank you, church, for being the church. Thank you for signing up. Thank you for answering the call. Thank you for uh, allowing the Lord to use you, allowing the Lord to use your family, uh, to use your time, treasure, and talent in such profound ways to serve the kingdom of God through the local church. It was Winston Churchill who said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And so many of you give, financially of course, but your time and your energy and, and your gifts and your talents to help Pioneer Drive be a place where we hope, we aim, that it's easy for people to connect with God and find people to share the journey of life with. This morning we're going to be in Romans chapter 12. Feel free to go ahead and turn there now. The, the last couple of weeks we've been in this same passage, and we've, we've seen how being a member of a church, belonging to a church, is about belonging to one another. We're connected. It's about being accountable to one another. It's about learning from one another. It's about serving one another and living life alongside one another on mission for God's kingdom. And so we've seen how there are different roles and how God has uniquely equipped each of us with our talents, our abilities, our gifts, for the purpose of serving and building up the body of Christ, to participate in the gospel ministry that he has entrusted to his church. There's no hidden agenda here, okay? We've been up front since week one of this series. Our goal has been to give you a higher view of the local church, uh, to give you a higher view of your role and your place within the local church, and uh, to inspire you to serve or continue to serve in your role at Pioneer Drive. And so, uh, Romans chapter 12, let's stand as we read. Uh, we've kind of worked our way backwards and around Romans chapter 12 over the past couple of weeks. But we'll read verse 1 this morning and focus in here. Paul says this to the church of Rome. He says, Therefore, I urge you, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what's in the background of this verse, really of everything the Apostle Paul ever wrote, What's, what must be what's on our mind as we read this incredible truth about what God has done for you and for me. That what God did in Christ Jesus was God came through Jesus Christ and he 
fulfilled the law. He rendered the law obsolete through Jesus of Nazareth. That what Jesus came and did is he came and he broke the curse of sin and death by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. And through that has made eternal life, life everlasting, life to the full, available to all people through Christ who now sits at the right hand of God. And so that's what Paul means by God's mercy to us. In view of God's mercy, what God has done for you and what God has done for me. In view of God's mercy, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now understand that to Romans, familiar with sacrifice, more so than we are, Paul has presented a paradox. How so? Well, a living sacrifice? It's an oxymoron. Sacrifices are things that are killed. They are stabbed and beaten and eaten and consumed on the altar. This is what Romans would have known when they thought of the word sacrifice. Because by definition, for something to be sacrificed, it had to be put to death. And other gods demanded animal sacrifices or virgin sacrifices or child sacrifices. But but Jesus Christ came and he died so that you could live. You didn't have to do that anymore. And so your sacrifice then for the Christian is to present your body, to present your entire life, to present your time, to present all you have and to present all that you are back to Jesus Christ, back to the Lord as a living sacrifice. He he uses a phrase in the Greek, it's logikos latria. It means this, it means logical service. The NIV translates it true and proper worship. But it's where we get our English word logical. Your logical service, your true and proper worship, your logical service. Because that's really what Paul is getting at here. This is, your, this is your logical service. This is the sensible, this is the obvious, this is the rational way to respond to the mercy of God. In other words, if you really believe that God has done this thing whereby you no longer have 613 statutes and regulations that stand over you, condemning you in your inability to keep all of those statutes, requiring you to sacrifice lambs and goats and doves and take part in ritual cleansings and ceremonial customs, lest you be sentenced to death and eternal separation from your creator. If you really believe that he has done that at great cost to himself, broken the curse of sin and death that stood against you, if you really believe that he has quite literally moved heaven and earth in order to move you from earth to heaven, if you really believe That Jesus, being by very nature God, did not consider equality with God a thing to be clung to, but rather, because of his love for you, stepped down from his throne, emptied himself of everything that made him God, wrapped himself in human flesh, took on the form of a servant, humbling himself even to the point of death, and death on a cross at that. If you really believe that he did that for you, then your logical response, church, is to offer your entire life, all you are, all you have, back to him. This is your logical service. I urge you, Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of what God has done for you, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Challenge with living sacrifice is that living sacrifices sometimes crawl off the altar. And we need to crawl back on. This is your logical service. That's all we have to offer, church. Ourselves, our time, our energy, our resources, our gifts, our talents. It may not feel like much, but it's what you have to offer. And when we talk about worship. Worship is certainly what we do here corporately. 
But it's more than going to church. It's more than Sunday worship. It's, it's more than singing songs or raising our hands or listening to a sermon. It's about our entire lives being a song. With hands raised and open hands in service to our Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is, loving the church, serving the church, which at times can be difficult and awkward and there can be hurt feelings, all of that can happen, but it's, it's a matter of obedience to our Lord. When Jesus was telling his disciples about the values of his kingdom, he, he gave them an image of a servant, someone who washed feet. It's a pretty lowly job in Jesus' day and age. When I was in high school, some of us provided leadership in our youth ministry, and it's where I learned so much about service in the kingdom. And there was a time when some of us who were providing leadership, even at that young age, were having a little bit of conflict. There was a little bit of pride and ego that was getting in the way of the ministry. And so our pastor called about four of us into his office, and he reached down into a bag and pulled out these towels. He opened his Bible and he read from Matthew chapter 20. He could have read from our passage from Mark earlier. He pulled out a towel, and he reminded us that our call, our call is to serve. The towel is the tool of the Christian to serve. This towel is in my office. Uh, It's a reminder for me to serve our congregation, to serve our Lord as a believer, a call to wash feet. It's the ethic of Jesus. It's the model of the church that, that greatness in the kingdom of God is defined by serving and it's countercultural because the world doesn't view it this way. But but it's in it's Jesus' kingdom, it's not those who are served, but rather it's those who do serve. They are the leaders. And and so that's a core value for us here at Pioneer Drive. You've you've heard it frequently. You ought to be able to say it. We contribute, not consume. That we will share our time, treasure, and talent generously and compassionately as givers, not takers. Givers, not takers. Because more than anything else, it's this value applied to our lives and to our congregation that will bring about transformation. It applies to our schedule on Sunday morning. It applies to our view of the local church and your place in it. Because so often we think through the lens of a consumer because that's what our culture is teaches us and forms us to do, and and we're conditioned to approach every relationship with an underlying interest of what can I get out of it? And when you're choosing an internet service provider, or when you're going to eat, or when you're deciding what kind of car to drive, that mentality can work. But when you approach a friendship, or a marriage, or the local church that way, it doesn't work. It actually leads to a lot of unhealth and dysfunction. So I want to ask you this question this morning. If you're thinking about application, this is where we, we get real. How do you view the church and your place in it? So I don't know what comes to mind when, when you think of church. Maybe it's singing worship songs. Maybe it's listening to a message, a sermon, maybe it's, maybe it's your Sunday school class and, and the prayer time or the lesson in there. Maybe it's the in-between moments in the hallway of fellowship where you get to see people you haven't seen all week or maybe you haven't seen in a little bit longer time frame. And, and all of those things are vital to what it means to be a part of the church and things that I look forward to on Sunday morning. But, but I would suggest, hear me on this, I would suggest that if serving isn't a major component in your view of the church and how you can serve 
through any number of ways that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, then it's time to reconsider how you view church. Service is so key. And Paul says everybody's been given a gift. Everybody's been given a gift. Because our, our primary reason for being here is not consuming. It's, it's contributing. It's serving the body. It's washing feet. It's being used by the Lord to make an impact in someone else's life, in someone else's faith journey. Because we believe something very profound here, that, that the Holy Spirit is at work in the midst of our work, that the Holy Spirit is moving in our moments, that he's speaking through you, through your words and through your service, that he's building the church even through the most mundane and ordinary steps of faithfulness. Because it's not about filling a spot. It's not about holding a door open. It's not about answering a question or changing a diaper or running a soundboard. It's about this word right here. Welcome. Because every single position of service, whether you're parking a car or playing an instrument or teaching a child or pointing a camera for us, it's about welcoming other people. It's about welcoming other people. Paul says in Romans 15, he says this in verse 7. He says, therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. It's about welcoming others because you have been welcomed into the family of God. It's not uh, about getting people into something so we can get something out of them, but simply because we, we agree that Jesus has offered something to us, his mercy, his grace, and it changes everything about how we live our life and it's our responsibility now to make sure that we are the ones offering that to other people and so we serve we show up early we stay late we go the extra mile and we go out of our way to offer welcome to other people because once upon a time we were the ones on the outside We were the ones on the fringes. We were the ones who weren't so sure about faith or about church. We were the ones who maybe were a bit jaded or cynical or skeptical. We were the ones seeking and searching. And God saw to it that someone welcomed us. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies, offer your lives Offer your time, offer your energy, offer your talent, offer your gifts to God as a living sacrifice, as your logical service. Welcome others as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. The Apostle Peter said this in 1 Peter 4. He said this, he said, The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. How we love the church right here. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Is there somebody you need to forgive in the body? Is there something you need to let go of today? Maybe that's a way to serve. Let go of the grudge. Let go of the issue. Let go of the decision. Love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You see, Jesus, Peter's teaching us something really important. Jesus is coming back. No one knows the day. No one knows the hour. But what Peter is saying, because of that reality, that ought to inspire us to live our lives faithful to Jesus. And that His kingdom sets the agenda for our lives, not any other agenda. And so, therefore, love one another. Be faithful in showing hospitality. Be faithful in stewarding our gifts for the building up of the Lord Jesus' church because God has gifted you. He has uniquely equipped you with whatever makes you you. Your friendliness, your sense of humor, your love for children, your knack for technology, your musical ability, your physical strength, your warm disposition, your wisdom, your aptitude for leadership, your humility, your interest in people, whatever you have received from the Lord, use it to serve others. In view of God's mercy, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. This is your logical service. So, Before we close, let me just take a minute. 
Just take a minute, because so many, I look around this room, and I can see prayer warriors, I can see servants, I see leaders through service all over this room, people who show up early, people who stay late, people who sign up sometimes for maybe more than they should, because they love the Lord's church and they want to see her thrive. Thank you. Thank you. You may never know. You may never know this side of heaven, the difference that is made through your service at this church. You may never, this side of heaven, see the fruit, the, the, the result, the investment of your time and, and your energy and your faithfulness, but, but I want you to hear a word of thanks. It's where we started and it's where we're ending. Because you're a part. You're a part of every single story of what God is doing in and among and through us. You're inspiring to me. You're inspiring to your, your ministers, your pastors. You're in, inspiring to your brothers and sisters in the family because you, you show, you demonstrate this through your time, through, through your actions that, that, that Pioneer Drive is, is your church we, because you know it's Jesus' church and you know Jesus has called you to serve. And because of your willingness to serve for the glory of God and the good of your neighbors, the kingdom is advancing in and through you. Our church, thank you. Thank you, Pioneer Drive, for being the people that make Pioneer Drive. Pioneer Drive, it's a special place because of you. Let's continue to be that for one another, for others, for the glory of God, and for the good of our neighbors. Let's pray. Father, we come to you and say thank you for what you've done for us. And thank you for the gift of what we give back to you as our gift, our time, our treasure, our talent. Lord, help us to serve you and to serve you really well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.